dear students uh, today let us discuss about the electrical conductivity and uh, ohms law that is uh, suppose uh, we have placed uh, uh, a metal uh, in an electric field and a magnetic field so then this uh, electron free electrons in this metal will be uh, under the influence of electric field e and magnetic field b and the force on such an electron will be equal to f uh, that is equal to lorentz force that is equal to charge is minus e, e into e plus uh, v cross b and uh, that force will be equal to m into acceleration that is m into dv by dt and uh, in terms of the momentum it will be h cross dk by dt now uh, suppose we uh, take the case of uh, a, a, the uh, fermi sphere uh, of this uh, system at a time t equal to 0 then the um, fermi sphere will be like this uh, this is the kx and ky axis of this fermi sphere then um, under the influence of this force uh, we can say that uh, uh, after a time t the fermi sphere has been moved um, to a little that is by a constant electric field uh, and in the presence of uh, and in the absence of collisions the fermi sphere moves in a in k space at a uniform rate so uh, the conclusion which we can make is that there will be some change in the momentum dk by dt is there since uh, f is not zero dk by dt is not zero so uh, there will be some change in the momentum and that is represented as the uh, change in the fermi sphere of the uh, um, system now in the absence of uh, magnetic field uh, b is equal to zero f will be equal to h cross dk by dt that is equal to minus e into e therefore dk by dt is equal to minus e into e by h cross or dk is equal to mm, minus e e divided by h cross into dt now fi to find out the uh, k value integrating this between the limits t equal to 0 and t equal to t k of t minus k of 0 we will get it as minus e e by h cross integral of dt is t within the limits 0 to t so k of t minus k of 0 that will be equal to minus e e by h cross into t that is if a force f is equal to minus e e is applied at a time t equal to 0 to an electron gas that fills the fermi space centered at the origin of k space so initially we have assumed that the center of the k space uh, uh, fermi sphere occupied uh, by the electron gas is uh, at the center of the k space mm, such that it's a um, the, the fermi sphere has its origin uh, centered at the origin of k space then at a later time t that sphere will be displaced to a new center and that displacement delta k will be equal to minus e, e by h cross into t so uh, in, in terms of this uh, application of force on electrons can be explained in terms of the uh, movement of the fermi sphere um, occupied by the electron gas uh, that is when these electrons collide with the impurities lattice imperfections and phonons uh, so this uh, free elect these electrons will have a tendency to collide with the impurities of these uh, substance then lattice imperfections will be there and sometimes phonon also will be there the displacement sphere will be maintained in a steady state so after a certain time uh, this uh, so we, here we have m into dv by dt f is also equal to m into dv by dt that means uh, uh, velocity is changing so after uh, collision if there is a collision then what happens is that this uh, system uh, this electron gas system attains a steady state and if the collision time is tau then we can write the equations as we have m into dv by dt is equal to h cross into dk by dt so dv is equal to h cross by m into dk uh, that is the expression which we get then uh, we can write this as uh, delta t is equal to minus e e by h cross into t delta k is equal to we can write this as delta k is equal to minus e e by h cross uh, into tau since here the time is taken as tau collision time uh, then incremental velocity is uh, from this equation you can see dv is equal to h cross dk by dm 
so uh, this incremental velocity we can write it as delta k by m so this is the expression for incremental velocity dv is equal to h cross by m into delta k so you can substitute the values h cross by m into delta k is minus e e by uh, e, e by h cross into tau so substituting this expression we will get it as minus e e tau divided by m h cross into m so that will be equal to um, the expression will be v is equal to minus e e tau by m so this is the expression for the incremental velocity so we have the expression uh, incremental velocity is delta k by m into h cross is there that have been uh, missed from this expression so here we have uh, I, I will write it again uh, dv is equal to h cross by m into d uh, delta k so we uh, this uh, uh, you can substitute the values that is uh, it is equal to delta k is minus e e tau divided by h cross into h cross divided by m so you can cancel this to h cross then the remaining value will be equal to minus e e tau divided by m so this is the expression for the incremental velocity of this uh, uh, electron cloud uh, when it encounters with the uh, if its collision time is tau now next we have to find out uh, the expression for the electrical conductivity that is uh, for that we are assuming that in a constant electric field e in a constant electric field e in a constant electric field e if there are n electrons of charge q n electrons of charge q uh, q is equal to minus e per unit volume that is uh, the charge is minus e per unit volume then the electric uh, current density electric current density which is given by j is equal to nqv so since uh, i uh, we have j is equal to i by a that is a uh, current density then uh, which is also equal to n into q into v the uh, one of the expression for the electric current density now we can substitute the values for each one n is this uh, n into q is e then uh, v is al already we have obtained it as minus e e tau by m then the expression becomes n into e square tau e by m so this is the expression for the uh, electric current density the ex uh, n in this expression is the uh, nothing but the number of uh, electrons per unit volume number of uh, we can say is the number density that is here n is number density e is the charge tau is the collision time e is the electric field and m is the mass so suppose we have provided with the avogadro number so in order to find out this n we can use this equation also uh, this number density that is equal to avogadro number divided by molar volume from this uh, equation we can find out the uh, number density now also uh, we have uh, j is equal to this uh, current density is defined as sigma into e where sigma is the electrical conductivity so comparing these two expression uh, we have j is nothing but sigma into e and we have obtained the expression for j as n e square tau e by m comparing these two expression we will obtain the expression for sigma as sigma is equal to n e square tau by m therefore electrical resistivity is the reciprocal of the electrical conductivity which is nothing but m divided by n e square into tau using this expression we can find out the uh, electrical conductivity of the metal uh, provided that its number density uh, is known uh, along with the collision time next we can see the reason for electrical resistivity of metals the electrical resistivity of a metal is to uh, because of two reasons the first one is by collision with the, uh, the uh, conduction electrons with the lattice phonons collision of conduction electrons with lattice phonons and the second one is the collision with impurity atoms and mechanical imperfections in the lattice so uh, based on that two conditions we can write the total expression for rho that is rho l plus rho i where l stands for the lattice phonons and i stands for the lattice imperfections and this expression for rho is known as Matheson's rule
where rho l is independent of the number of defects and uh, rho a is independent of temperature since we know these uh, lattice imperfections uh, is uh, it is independent of the um, temperature lattice imperfection is a property of the material which is independent of temperature and rho l is a, a dependent you know, temperature dependent function but it is independent of the number of defects so as temperature tends to zero this uh, as temperature uh, uh, changes to approaches zero this rho l vanishes because rho l is a temperature dependent function so the residual resistivity of a substance that is an important factor residual resistivity rho i of zero is the extrapolated resistivity at a zero kelvin uh, the extrapolated resistivity at zero kelvin is termed as the residual uh, resistivity and therefore lattice resistivity at any temperature is given by rho l of t is equal to rho minus rho i of zero where rho is the total resistivity so uh, residual uh, this uh, lattice resistivity is obtained by uh, subtracting uh, this uh, rho i of zero that is the residual resistivity um, from the total resistivity then another quantity that is the resistivity ratio of a specimen is the ratio of its uh, resistivity at a room temperature to its uh, residual resistivity the ratio between the resistivity at a room temperature to the residual resistivity rho i of zero that is termed as the resistivity ratio then we have another expression the mean free path of a conduction electron is given by the expression l is equal to vf into tau where vf is the velocity at the fermi surface and tau is the collision time so if we know tau collision time and uh, the vel fermi velocity then we can find out the mean free path length of the uh, mean free path of the conduction electrons then we can do one problem related to this uh, that is a uniform copper wire whose diameter is 0.16 cm carries a steady state current of 10 ampere its density and atomic weights are respectively 0.8920 kg per meter cube and 63.5 respectively calculate the current density and drift velocity of the electrons in copper then first of all we have to find out the uh, j value j we know that is equal to i by a that is equal to i is 10 ampere a is pi r square then given it's a, a diameter as 0.16 so it's a radius is h into 10 raised to minus 4 um, the whole square then the value of uh, this uh, j is obtained as 4.97 into 10 raised to 6 ampere per meter square then come to the uh, case of uh, vd and then we have the expression for uh, this uh, uh, j as j we know it is equal to n q v where v is the uh, drift velocity so uh, from this uh, e instead of q we have e so from this we can find out v as v is equal to j divided by n e so uh, then n is nothing but th that is the number density uh, so it is equal to so this uh, number density that is obtained as uh, so uh, in 63.5 grams uh, in 63.5 uh, atomic weight uh, it contains uh, Avogadro number s.02 into 10 raised to 23 that is the Avogadro number that is in 63.5 uh, grams so uh, in 1 gram we have 6.02 6 into 10 raised to 23 divided by 63.5 that much uh, is the uh, number of atoms in 1 gram since the density is uh, 8920 kilogram per meter cube uh, we have to multiply this quantity with uh, 8920 in order to obtain the number density that is uh, number per unit uh, density is already given so number uh, uh, number density is obtained by this equation since already we have in grams we have to multiply it with uh, again 10 raised to th uh, 3 so that 10 raised to 23 becomes 10 raised to 26 then vd is equal to j divided by ne that is equal to 
फोर पॉइंट नयन सवें सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू सिक्स डिवैडड बै दिस् एन इंटू ई द चार्ज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन दट इस ऑप्टेन डे थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स सवें इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस फोर मीटर पे सैकंड नेक्स्ट वी हेव टू डिस्क अब दि वीडमें प्लांट लोरें लो एंड दिस् इन दिस् वी कैन से दाट The electrons are not only the agency for, of electrical conduction in an electric field, but also responsible for the transport of thermal energy in a solid. So, electron is uh, responsible for the thermal conduction and also for the electrical conduction. Then, the ratio of the uh, two conductivities are uh, that is a uh, Ke and sigma. Sigma is the uh, electrical conductivity, and Ke is the thermal conductivity. And the ratio of these two. Uh, which we uh, how uh, we have ke is equal to pi square n kb square t into to divided by 3m divided by n e square to by m cancelling these two we will get it as uh, pi square kb square divided by 3 e square into t so this is the expression for ke by sigma when beatman uh, st uh, ran stated that the ratio of ke by sigma remains a constant for All metals at a fixed temperature. When temperature is constant, the, uh, this Ke by sigma will always be a constant for a given uh, metal. But La Lorentz later modified this expression as uh, Ke by sigma into T always remains a constant. So the first one is Wittmann uh, Franz law, and the second one is Wittmann Lorentz law. It is known as the end. Ke by sigma T. It is uh, always a constant because pi square is a constant, Kb is a constant, E is also a constant. So uh, we are getting uh, Ke by sigma T is as a constant, and that constant is known as the Lorentz number. So the Lorentz number is the ratio of the Ke to sigma T, and its value is obtained as 2.45 into 10 raised to minus 8 watt ohm per degree square, and uh, At low temperature, this uh, T E that is the temperature which is less than D by temperature. Lorentz number tends to decrease because of the collision time involved in the two conductivities is not uh, identical. So here we have cancelled the two uh, collision times of uh, to uh, in the numerator and denominator. But actually there is at low temperature there is a difference in the collision time for the two types of conductivities so under that conditions uh, this uh, lorentz number will have a um, tendency to decrease from its uh, standard value now the thing which we have already discussed uh, that is a uh, it is uh, named as a sommerfeld's model that is a uh, electrons in a metal are in the field of all nuclei and all other electrons and potential energy for such an electron may expected to be periodic and this uh, assumption for these uh, free electrons uh, it is termed as the uh, sommerfeld's model uh, so the uh, main assumptions in the sommerfeld's model are the free electrons are those giving rise to conductivity find themselves in a potential which is constant everywhere inside the metal the free electrons are in a constant potential created by the uh, this uh, created by themselves then since one does not observe electron emission from metals at room temperature it is evident that the potential energy of electron at rest must be lower than that of an electron at uh, Mm, rest outside this metal uh, we cannot see any uh, electron uh, uh, out from a metal so the conclusion is that uh, the free energy of potential energy of an electron at rest uh, outside the metal mm, uh, and inside the metal suppose we compare that two potential energies then the potential energy of an electron at rest uh, will be lower than that of an electron at rest outside the metal that is the interior of a metal is represented as can uh, it can be represented as a potential energy box and this is the major con uh, assumptions of the sommerfeld's model based on this model we have developed the quantum free electron theory and the sommerfeld theory uh, from that we have obtained the energy levels of one dimensional electron gas and a three dimensional electron gas etc from in the beginning of this chapter so that is all about this electrical conductivity and its associated uh, this uh, lorentz number etc